Substitutions in baseball are fairly straightforward, but depending on what situation the game is in at the time of the sub, it might be called something different. So really this video is just explaining how five different terms all essentially mean the same thing. Baseball subs are a one-way street, so once a player is removed, he cannot re-enter the game. Just like in football, but not like in football. A player can be subbed in or out of a game at any point, and while there are some exceptions for pitchers, we'll come back to that a little bit later. So before every game, the manager of your team will meet at home plate with the umpires, and he will give both the umpire and the other team's manager a copy of his lineup for that day's game. This will include their starting lineup of guys who are going to play and their substitutions who are going to sit on the bench and eat sunflower seeds, but will also be eligible to be subbed into the game at any point. A starting lineup will be either 9 or 10 players, depending on whether or not there is a DH in the game, and the total number of guys on the team, at least in Major League Baseball, will be 26. So in the NL, that's... Seventeen guys who could sub in, although in practice some of those players are pitchers who won't play in that game unless it goes like 17 innings or something crazy, meaning that realistically a team will probably have like five or six position subs and six or seven potential pitcher subs. There are two aspects of a starting lineup. First is the position that they are in in the batting order, first, second, third, all the way down to ninth. And once you are in that spot in the order, you cannot move from that slot. The order stays the same. The other aspect is the defensive position that you are playing. Any player in the lineup can be switched to any other position at any point during the game as long as the team has one player in each position at all times. All right, so to the issue at hand here. As in physics, where there are four states of matter, in baseball players, there are also four states, hitting, fielding, running, and pitching. Substitutions can happen regardless of which state you are in. They're just called different things. So if it's Baker's turn in the lineup to bat, but he just, I don't know, came down with a case of leprosy, then the manager will go to the umpire and say, we are going to pinch hit Taylor for Baker, meaning that Baker is out of the game and Taylor is now hitting in his spot in the batting order. Because he hasn't played on defense yet, though, he's still just considered a pinch hitter. Inevitably, though, that half inning will end and this team will have to take their defensive positions in the field and Taylor will have to be assigned to one of them. Now, 98% of the time, Taylor will just take up Baker's spot at second base. Although, sometimes you'll see Taylor go out to, say, shortstop, and the shortstop will move over to second base. Again, the players who are already in the game could trade positions all they want, but it generally doesn't happen all that often. Scenario 2. Baker is in the field playing second base when he breaks his ankle. At this point, obviously we'll need a substitution for him. But as he is in the defensive state of baseball player, bringing in Taylor to take his spot at second base is referred to as a defensive substitution. In effect, though, it basically has the same outcome as in the first situation. Taylor plays in Baker's position, and he would hit in his spot in the batting order. Defensive substitutions are most often made at the beginning of the half inning, but obviously with injuries, they could happen at any point. The third state of substitution is the pinch runner, who would sub into the game for someone who is already on base. This will often happen late in a close game when a team puts in a fast runner for a slower runner. The same way that a pinch hitter takes over that player's spot in the lineup, so too would a pinch runner, and he would have to then declare his defensive position when his team returns to the field. If this sub, say, happens in the last half inning of a game and the pinch runner comes around and scores the winning run, then he would never really have to declare a defensive position as he never played the field, which I suppose is technically why pinch runners and hitters even exist as a term, rather than just calling Taylor the new second baseman, even if he's entering the game to run the bases first. The rules also clarify that a player who is already in the lineup cannot pinch run for another player. However, in some younger leagues, there is a position called a courtesy runner, which is kind of like a pinch runner, but once they are done running the bases, then the original player remains in the game on defense. This isn't a thing at higher levels of play, though, so check your local listings. Finally, we come to pitchers, who have a few more rules with regards to substitutions. Because pitchers are such an important aspect of the game, the manager or the pitching coach is allowed to walk out to the mound and talk to the pitcher during the game. This is called a mound visit. When he gets out there, they're typically going to discuss how the pitcher feels, what pitches he should throw to the next hitter, and where they're going to eat after the game. 
On the other hand, if it's a softball game, they'll also probably discuss how the pitcher feels, what pitches she should throw to the next hitter, and probably try to come up with another one of those annoying clapping cheers. Coaches can make one mound visit an inning, but if you go back out a second time, then the pitcher must be taken out of the game and replaced with another one. Once a pitcher is brought into the game, he must pitch to at least three batters before he can be removed, unless he is injured or he throws to, say, one batter who makes the third out of an inning, then his team can send out a new pitcher to start the next half inning. This is a rule that was only added within the last few years in the major leagues because teams were bringing in a pitcher to throw to just one hitter and then changing to a new one for one or two more batters and then changing him, and it just began to take so long that it was kind of ridiculous because, as we all know, only people who are attracted to extreme sports with breakneck speeds watch baseball, and they wanted the game to go a little quicker. Now, I had mentioned that players can switch positions at any time, and this also includes the pitcher. So if you want to switch, say, your right fielder and the pitcher for a batter or two, you can. It doesn't happen very often, but just know that pitchers are limited to one defensive position switch per inning. Finally, we'll go over a scenario which seems to confuse a lot of people, but really probably shouldn't, which is called a double switch. Really, all a double switch means is that multiple substitutions are happening at once, which really isn't all that difficult to understand. When people say double switch, though, they are probably referring to a specific scenario that happens late in a game and only in National League games where the pitcher has to hit. So we have our lineup here. We've just concluded the bottom of the sixth, and Frank on our team has made the last out. We are now going to take the field to start the seventh inning. Our pitcher, Irwin, though, after a couple batters, has gotten tired. So we are going to take him out of the game. But if we bring in our backup pitcher, Walter, and just have him replace Irwin in the ninth spot in the order, that means that he would have to hit third the next inning. And like most pitchers, Walter isn't a very good hitter. So we have two options. Either we pitch Walter for just this half inning, and then we bring in a pinch hitter for him, which means we'll also have to waste a pitch hitter. So what we're going to do is bring Walter into pitch, but he's going to replace Frank in the batting order while our new right fielder, James, will hit in the ninth position in the lineup, which we prefer because he is a better hitter. So it's fine if he hits in the next half inning. So there you have it. That's substitutions in baseball. Players can be subbed in at any point in the game. If it's while they are hitting, then the new player is a pinch hitter. If they are in the field, it is a defensive substitution. If he is running the bases, then he is a pinch runner. A player must stay in his spot in the batting order, but can move defensive positions to wherever he wants to. Pitchers can be relieved at any point, but the new one must complete three at-bats before he can be taken out. And finally, a double switch replaces two players while switching their positions with regards to their respective spots in the lineup. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go check on Baker's ankle. 